Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at the retry scope activity. But before we get started, please take the time to hover over the red watermark in the bottom right of the video and subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos for you. Also, if you like the video, please give it a like. But let's get to it. Okay, so we're inside Studio in an empty project. And what I want to start by doing is just drag a retry scope activity into my designer. And we can see that the retry scope activity consists of two main things. A sequence of actions that will be retried until a condition is met or retried until a certain number of retries have been performed. So this is the two major properties of the retry scope activity. The number of retries to perform, we set that to three, uh, four, I guess, and the retry interval, and we will set that also to four seconds. Let me change this back to three. So whatever is inside the actions here will be done three times or until the condition is met. Now what we want to do for simplicity's sake is simply start calculator. And we don't want to start the calculator every single time uh, the retry is performed. We want to start it every third time or so. So how do we do that? Well, let's do a little bit of groundwork. In this action sequence here, what we want to do is we want to do an assign. And we will assign to a variable called remainder. And we will just set that to be of type integer and then hide this uh, variables pane again. And let me just open the expression editor here. And what we want to assign to the remainder variable is basically a value based on the current time and the milliseconds of the current time. So this will be a value between 0 and 999. Well, we want to take that value and then divide it by 3 using the uh, modulo function. And that will give us the remainder of the calculation or the division of the millisecond value divided by three. So for example, if the millisecond value is 33, that will divide evenly by 11, and that will give us a zero back because zero is the remainder of that calculation. If it was 35, then the remainder would be two because 35 would be divisible by three 11 times, but with a remainder of two, if that makes sense. You could say that this is a simpler way of getting a random number between zero and two, than by having to create a random object and all of those things you do in normal visual basic programming. So this will give us a value between zero and two into the remainder variable. Let's just for good measure, log that. So we will log that with a message saying that remainder is, and then write out the remainder to a string. Now inside our action sequence here, we also want to do one more thing. We want to throw in an if statement and we want to say that if the remainder is zero, then we want to do something. And what we want to do is we want to start an application. And the application we want to start is going to be calculator that we have right here. So we'll indicate that window on the screen. And that's all we want to do. Now, what if the remainder isn't zero? Well, uh, we can show the else block here, and that's new in 21.4, by the way. And inside the else block, all we want to do is we just want to throw an exception. So we'll drag an exception over, and I'll just paste something in. And what I'm pasting in here is just the instantiation of new exception with the message that the condition to start calculator was not met, because we only want to start calculator if the result of this calculation up here is zero. So if it's zero, we start calculator. If it's not zero, we throw an exception. So that basically takes care of all of the actions that we want to perform in the retry scope. But we need to set up the condition for when to break out of this retry loop. So we'll just minimize the action sequence here, and then we'll go to the condition here. And what we'll use in this condition is the element exists activity. And that will be used to see if a calculator instance has been opened on the screen. So we'll indicate on screen, select the calculator application, and that should take care of that. Now, the exists property up here is the output of this evaluation if the element exists. We will store that into a variable called calculator opened. So if we just expand this again, we can see the entire thing. And before I run through what happens, we'll just add one more activity outside of the retry scope, and that'll be a message box. And what we'll do here is we'll just let the user know whether or not we started calculator. So the text of the message box, I'll just open the expression editor again because I want to do something just slightly tricky that you may not know about. 
in Visual Basic, you can sort of contract an if statement into one line. And basically the syntax is you type in the if, and then you type in the expression to be evaluated. And that is, in our case, the calculator opened variable. If that is true, then we want to write out to the message box, calculator was opened. Yay. And then a comma and then the else part of the if statement. That will then be no calculator for you, Sonny. And then click OK. So this will evaluate the calculator opened uh, variable value. And if it's true, we will write out to the message box calculator was opened. And if it was false, it will be no calculator for you, Sonny. So let's just run through it very quickly before we actually execute it. We have a sequence. Inside of that, we have a retry scope. Inside of the retry scope, we have two elements. We have an action sequence, and then we have the condition. And the action sequence here will be executed until either the condition down here is met, being that the calculator exists on the screen, or that the maximum number of retries have been reached. And in our case, that's three retries, and they will be retried at an interval of two seconds. So let's try and run this and keep an eye on the output window. In fact, in this first run through, let me just set a breakpoint here so we can take it nice and slow. So we start it up. Now we see here that the remainder actually is uh, zero. So the condition is met to start calculator. So we'll uh, step through it and we can see that the calculator is started. There's calculator. The condition will be evaluated. And because it's met, we step out of the retry scope activity go down to the message box uh, activity at the bottom, and then it will write out, calculator was opened, yay, and we can click OK. So let's try and uh, remove the breakpoint and run it one more time. We can see that the remainder down here is two, an exception is thrown, and it will break because of the exception. We'll just uh, continue on to the next execution of the uh, retry scope. The remainder is two again. So again, we will have to try one more time. And the remainder is two once again. And therefore, we break out of the scope and an exception is thrown. And the exception bubbles all the way to the top. And we will have to handle that exception as we would otherwise. But in the first try, you saw that the remainder was zero. And therefore, the condition was met. And we broke out of the retry scope. And then in the second attempt, the remainder was two all three times in a row. And uh, that's no good. So uh, we never got the calculator started. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense out of the retry scope activity. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a like if you did like it. But I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.